This right here is the cheapest electric motorcycle that I could find on the internet, and it only cost me $5,000. And yes, that's even cheaper than the cheapest electric bike that I found at the auction. And it's one of 219 ever produced. Making this one of the rarest motorcycles that I've ever owned. Yes, more rare than my Harley Davidson Destroyer, which I can't legally talk about anymore, and more rare than my Pulse Auto Cycle, which I don't want to talk about because we never got it running and it kind of drives me nuts. Now, before I tell you why I'm exactly 10 miles past the range of what this motorcycle can do away from my shop, and before we jump to any conclusions of whether we hate the bike or whether we like the bike, first, we need to travel a few days in the past, and a slightly younger Sean is gonna tell you the weird story behind this bike. Oh, shoot, I'm not ready yet. Go another hour in the future. <laughs> oh, sorry, I got distracted. I started drawing this cute pig, and then I started thinking how Charlotte's Web is actually a metaphor for my life. This is the 2016 Victory Impulse TT, and yes, it's Victory, and yes, it's American, but it's not made by Victory at all. It was made by a small company called Bramo. Bramo started in the early 2000s because a guy named Craig Bramshire saw a need for a supercar that could fit taller people. They first started with importing Altima GTRs to study, build, and sell them, and then they set out to make their own supercar called the Bramo Rogue GT, which was gonna be powered by a 9.8 liter British-made V12 making 850 horsepower, but that never worked out. So the company pivoted to be the first company in America to license and build the Aerial Atom. And they created and sold just over 130 cars, Jay Leno being their first customer buying number one. And a side note, a few years ago, I was able to buy number 50. Now I know what you're thinking, but Sean, this channel's not about cars, and you're right, but you know what else this channel's not about? Kittens, and you guys love cute kittens. Okay, that's enough kittens, no more kittens, let's get back to the bikes. And for whatever reason, they pivoted again, using their knowledge of building supercars like the Atom and their interest in electric vehicles, and with the help of a $10 million investment from Best Buy Venture Capital, they built the Bramo Inertia, which they apparently sold inside Best Buy. So they went from the Inertia, they can do 60 miles an hour, to this, and this, and this. And if you don't believe me, there's still reviews up on the Best Buy website. Which kind of makes sense because this thing was seen as less of a motorcycle and more of just high-end tech with wheels on it. And back then, electric bikes were so new that they had very few regulations on it like they do now. And if you're wondering what it costs, it costs $8,995. Which is $5 less than this TV that you can buy at Best Buy. TV or some type of motorcycle. And then in 2010, they announced the creation of the Bramo Impulse. It looked just like this, except it didn't say Victory on it, it said Bramo. They also dabbled in some cool electric dirt bikes that no one's ever heard of, but the production took longer than expected. And this is the important part. This is the single-handedly greatest thing that Bramo did in making this motorcycle. The thing that separates this from all other electric motorcycles, Bramo showed us that they get it. Let me show you. Oh. It's got a conventional gearbox and a shifter and a clutch on it. This is the thing that motorcycle companies don't get. Motorcycles are made to be fun. Even on the automatic Hondas, you can still shift the gears with the button. And despite what people think, electric motors cannot do infinite RPMs. For example, the Harley-Davidson Livewire can only do 9,900 RPMs, and that takes you to 115 miles per hour. Imagine what it could do if it had two speeds, or even three speeds. Now, I know the wheels in your head are turning, because having a conventional gearbox on an electric motorcycle changes a lot of things about the bike. All right, so let me show you what I'm making a big deal about this. This is some things that this thing can do that no other electric bike can do. So you turn the key, then you press this little start button down here, and you hear it click. You hear this, you watch the thing go. And you can actually, you pull the clutch and you can rev the bike up. Another weird thing about it is, you don't have to be in any, okay, I'm in first gear, I can just let the clutch off and it's not gonna stall. And now it's kind of like a, it's like a scooter, it's like twist and go. I could also be in second gear. I don't have as much pep, but if you wanted to, you can pop this thing the whole way up into fifth gear and ride the bike like that. But what I have noticed is that when you're actually, when you're actually driving it, you can't just jam it in the gear. You do need to take the load off the engine, pull the clutch in, and then drive it like a, you know, it really drives like a normal bike, except you can't stall it. The biggest problem I've always had with electric bikes was it's, you felt disconnected. We're so used to getting on a bike, jumping on, it's kind of revving up, feel the, feeling the engine a little bit. You can't do that with an electric bike. It's dangerous. You give a little, you, you rev it up like that, 
you're you're up in a tree, the thing's the thing's flying. This bike you can do it. And just because it's everything's normal except for it's got a baby sounding like bird of an engine. But it makes pretty good power. So I got a little sidetracked and never finished the actual story. So the Impulse was first delivered in 2022, and then two years later, Bramall got bought out by Polaris and adds the Impulse to the Victory motorcycle lineup, where it was sold for $19,999. And around 2015, you were able to buy a five-year-old design for around $20,000. And then two years later, Polaris drops the Victory line and altogether focuses on the Indian motorcycle company, which they bought in 2011, putting a sudden halt to the first ever electric motorcycle to ever be sold under a big name brand in America. Now that might sound really awesome that I own a super rare motorcycle, but uh, it might not be as great as you think it is because of this. See, there's another side to having a really rare motorcycle, and that's, can you get parts for it? Now, Polaris, that owns Vind Indian and also owns Victory, said that they were gonna service Victories and sell their parts for the next 10 years, which was in 2017, so we still have a couple more years left. But are there any parts available? Let's pop in at the Victory place and see. Craig, what are you doing? Didn't you hear? No. We just got sponsored by SeatGeek. Oh shoot, I should do a thing about it. I just found out that SeatGeek is the number one ticketing app with over 28 million downloads. Did you know that SeatGeek has over 70,000 events a day? Anything from sporting events to Broadway and comedy shows and concert tickets. So you have a lot of awesome three-letter sports acronyms happening. MLB, NFL, all these things going on. And they got all your favorite comedians, including people like Jerry Seinfeld. Craig, what's that concert you were going to? Fish. Craig loves fish. So SeatGeek is always trying to make sure that you guys are getting a good deal. Green means good and red means bad. And with SeatGeek, one of the best features is swaps. That lets you return your tickets prior to the event. In case you break an ankle playing sports ball. And you guys know that I came through for you guys. So use my code Bikes and Beards on SeatGeek for $20 discount on your next ticket to the next coolest thing you're gonna do. And here's the conclusion. Just to buy the upper battery, 7,500 bucks. It's a modular battery, so there's a lower part of the battery. 4,500 bucks, what is that together? $12,000. This, the caveat is they don't even have them. They're not even available. So I was like, there's no parts you can get for this thing. And he's like, well, that's not true. We found one bolt that we can get. One bolt that we can source, but he didn't give me a price. So, that's the other side of it. So the best thing about electric motorcycles is obviously the zero to 60 acceleration. They just pull and they pull really hard. The Harley Davidson Livewire did it in just about three seconds. The zero, a little bit slower, but four seconds. And the gearbox is probably gonna hurt the zero to 60, but let's see how fast the Impulse can do it. So we went out to a closed course track that was abandoned in an airfield in Mexico where the speed limit is more than 60 miles an hour. So I tried a couple of different ways to do the zero to 60, and if you're wondering, first gear will get you from zero to 60. But I thought it might be faster if I shifted in the second, and then I tried dumping the clutch, and then I tried holding the brake. And finally, this was my best time. Then we had another test. You have a certain set of expectations that a motorcycle has to fill, and this is one of the most important ones, and I would never hear the end of it if I didn't do the tablecloth test. Man, I thought I had that one. All right, so the tablecloth test kind of ended up, I guess, how we all thought it was going to. Someday we will find a motorcycle that can pull that tablecloth right off it, just like they did on that BMW video. But the big question I have is, they have claimed horsepower and torque, but it's an electric bike. Our buddy Brandon over at, at Appalachian Harley-Davidson says his dyno can test for that. So let's take this thing over to Brandon and see if it has as much horsepower as the bike claims to have. Hold your ears, guys. You should I get, I should get in top gear, though? Yeah. Yeah, whatever the highest gear is. Oh, it's 16, okay. Yeah. It's at 136 miles an hour. They said this thing can only do 100. My guess is that that is right. That the green one, the last one, 
is truly what it is. Oh, right. That, that makes the most sense. That's the closest to everything else we have. So considering the loss of power that you get between the engine and the drivetrain and the wheels, it actually looks like it's pretty close to what the, the manufacturer said that the power is supposed to be. But this all brings us back to current time, which is where we started. Guys, so we are here in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And if you don't believe me, just look around. There's Her Hershey Kisses up there. And there, there, right there is the kissing tower. That's where babies are made. It's Hershey, Pennsylvania. And the reason we're here is that the store at home didn't have the candy bar that I liked. And I told Dan that I'd get him a piece of candy also. Really good. Thanks for the chocolate. Welcome. This also conveniently puts us 10 miles past the estimated range of this motorcycle. And we got to try to get back to the shop. Now, normally in videos like this, when we do this, we kind of baby and we delicately ride the bike back home. And then somehow, sometimes we make it and sometimes we don't. I'm kind of getting tired of that. I don't want to ride a bike so I can delicately make it limp at home, possibly. I want to ride a bike because I want to have fun on it. I want to do the things that I normally do when I'm riding. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And to help me with that, is Craig, who just so happens to be riding the motorcycle that we also paid $5,000 for and is a ton of fun and is powered by dinosaur goo. Nice. That's a cool looking bike. I'm excited to ride it. How much you pay for that thing? I don't know, about 5,000 bucks. That's how much we pay for this. How much horsepower is it? Uh, like, what is it, 56, 54? That's about what this thing is. What other similarities do they have? Handlebars, they both have Handlebars, yeah, they got that. Um, they look the same, kind of. They have that naked look, that naked sport bike look. How many foot pounds of torque do you got? I think 60. Yeah, I'm right there. So these bikes are actually very similar. They're both very similarly priced in the used market. They both weigh about the same. They both, uh, they both have the same amount of horsepower. Power. They both have goofy looking swing arms. They're also, they're both a lot of fun. But the big question is, which one do you choose? Do you go electric or do you go gas? And here's a quick montage because every time we bring in a new motorcycle, we need to do another quick montage. It's, it's just the law, I guess. This thing was struggling to do 95. I bet this thing could barely do 100. This thing gets to 100 pretty quick. Yeah, you were scooting, man. So in the name of having fun on our ride home, we did what every motorcycle rider always does on their commute home with their buddies, no exceptions. First, we wanted to see whose motorcycle was faster. Ready, set, go. Okay. Okay. Third gear. Yep. One, two, three, go. Oh man. Well, it's no fun if your bike is faster and louder. Right? Then we did some flybys while always obeying the speed limit. Then we did the daily motorcycle burnout in some uh, church parking lot. And of course, like we usually do, we stole the Declaration of Independence to try to find the treasure because it's been a lifelong pursuit of my family for the past five generations to find it. Then we got into a fist fight over who had the prettiest, most loving, and most caring wife. Are you all right? And like I always do, I bought a BMW because the guys at Porsche wouldn't let us film this segment at the Porsche dealership. Then we used the greatest motorcycle detailer on earth, the M1 Moto Fast Detailer, available on Amazon, by the way, which is also good for decoding hidden maps on top of government documents. We then proceeded to our routine of spoiling our dinner and getting chased through a series of backyards. We also figured out every possible conceivable combination that we could of riding each other's motorcycles. And like always, I decided to give up on my family dream of finding the treasure and pick up the pieces of my broken life and move on and put that treasure nonsense behind me. And after that, we continued with the normal riding routine that all motorcyclists always do when they're on their way home. 
no exceptions. That's it, I'm dead. I'm dead. Well, that's it. All it did was 45 miles. It was fun, but I don't think it was as much fun as Craig was having. That wraps it up. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out this next video right here. We'll see you guys next time.